She is known as the voice over internet protocol, and that's just one of her many accomplishments. She has over 200 patents to her name, and last year she became one of only two black women inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Every time you make a Zoom call or send a voice message on WhatsApp, you're using technology invented by a black woman whose name you've probably never heard. Her name is Dr. Marion Croak, and she holds over 200 patents that literally transformed how the internet works. She's the engineer who invented voice over internet protocol, also known as VOIP, which converts your voice into digital data so it could travel across the internet instead of old copper phone lines. Without her work, there would be no video conferencing, no internet phone calls, no FaceTime, no Discord voice chat, nothing. She also invented the technology that lets you donate money to charities by text message, a system that raised $43 million for Haiti earthquake victims in 2010 and changed disaster relief forever. But despite creating the backbone of modern internet communication, filing more patents than most inventors dream of in a lifetime, and literally changing how 8 billion people communicate, most people have never heard her name. So how did a black woman from New York City become one of the most important inventors in internet history? Why did it take until 2022 for her to be inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame? And why don't textbooks teach her name alongside Steve Jobs and Bill Gates? Marion Rogers Croak was born on May 14, 1955 in New York City, just one year after the Supreme Court ruled that public schools must be desegregated in Brown v. Board of Education. She grew up in the 1960s as a black girl in America, a time when women, especially women of color, faced massive barriers in education and career opportunities. Her father had only an elementary school education, but he recognized something special in his daughter and built her a chemistry set at home so she could experiment and explore. Marion became fascinated by how things worked. She'd watch plumbers, electricians, and technicians come to fix things in her house, and she was entranced by their ability to solve problems and make broken systems work again. That desire to fix things, to make systems better, would define her entire career. She credits those early experiences and her father's support for sparking her lifelong interest in technology and engineering. She went to Princeton University and graduated with her bachelor's degree in 1977, then earned her PhD in social psychology and quantitative analysis from the University of Southern California in 1982. Quantitative analysis is basically what we call data science today, studying patterns in numbers and information. This combination of understanding both human behavior and complex data would prove crucial to her later innovations. In 1982, fresh out of graduate school, Marion joined AT&T Bell Laboratories in the Human Factors Division. Her job was to study how technology could be used to positively impact people's lives. Not just how to build impressive machines, but how to make technology that actually helped humans. This was cutting-edge thinking at the time, and it put her at the perfect place to witness the birth of something revolutionary. Because in 1983, just one year after she started at Bell Labs, the internet as we know it came into existence. The early internet, called ARPANET, had been around since 1969 when two computers, one at Stanford and one at UCLA, connected to each other through a satellite link. But in 1983, the network officially adopted TCP IP, the standardized protocol for packaging and communicating information that allowed computers to talk to each other reliably. This was the moment the modern internet was born. And Marion Croak was there watching it happen, working in the exact place where these decisions were being made. In fact, she and her team at Bell Labs played a crucial role in convincing AT&T to adopt TCP IP instead of competing protocols. At the time, nobody knew which technology would win. Some researchers were pushing VTOA, voice telephony over ATM, which thank goodness didn't win because that acronym is terrible. But Marion believed in TCP slash IP, and her knowledge and expertise convinced the entirety of AT&T and Bell Labs to make the switch. That decision shaped the entire future of internet communications. But Marion saw something that most of her colleagues didn't see. She looked at the early internet and realized it wasn't just going to be a tool for sending text and data between computers. She believed the internet would completely transform how humans communicated with each other. That one day voice conversations would travel the same way as emails and files. 
This was a radical vision in the early 1980s when most people still thought the internet was a passing fad. At the time, AT&T was running two separate networks, traditional phone lines using analog signals for voice calls, and digital lines for early internet data. Marion realized this was inefficient and expensive. Why run two completely separate systems when you could convert voice into digital data and send everything through one network? The problem was that nobody knew if it would work. Voice calls require real-time transmission with no delays. If the technology couldn't handle that, conversations would sound choppy and unusable. So, Marion and her team started experimenting. They worked on what she called packetizing voice. Breaking down voice waves into tiny digital packets that could be sent over internet protocols just like any other data, then reassembled on the other end in real time. And it worked. She later said in an interview with USC, We tried experimenting with packetizing voice and treating it just like it was data and running it over an IP connection, and it worked. But getting it to work in a lab was one thing. Convincing an entire telecommunications giant to abandon its traditional phone network and switch to this experimental technology was something else entirely. Marion faced massive skepticism from her colleagues at AT&T. Many of them thought the internet was a temporary trend that would fade away. Others argued that VoIP would never deliver the quality and reliability people expected from phone calls. Some dismissed her ideas simply because she was a black woman in a corporate environment dominated by white men. Marion has spoken openly about how hard it was to be taken seriously. I hope that my induction serves to inspire others and that it opens the door for other very talented people like Dr. Bath and myself. She recalled moments of being dismissed in meetings, of having others take credit for her insights, of constantly having to prove herself in ways her white male colleagues never did. But she persisted. She knew her technology worked, and she kept fighting for it. Her persistence paid off. She got approval to begin full-scale development of VoIP systems at AT&T. She later said, We got it so that it was fairly easy to adapt the internet protocol to carry voice traffic reliably and at scale. Suddenly, everything shifted. And the very people that had argued against it started working in my organization. The skeptics became believers once they saw what her technology could do. Over her 32 years at AT&T and Bell Labs, Marion filed over 200 patents, with approximately 100 of them directly related to VoIP technology. Think about that for a second. Most inventors are lucky to get one or two patents in their entire career. Marion filed over 200, making her one of the most prolific inventors in American history. Her work laid the foundation for every single voice and video communication platform that exists today. Skype, Zoom, WhatsApp calls, FaceTime, Discord, Google Meet, Microsoft Teams. Every single one of these platforms exists because Marion Croak figured out how to send voice as data over the internet. But she didn't stop there. During her time at AT&T, she kept innovating and solving problems that others weren't even thinking about. In the early 2000s, when cell phones were becoming popular across America, Marion saw another opportunity. She noticed that AT&T had developed technology for American Idol that let viewers vote by text message instead of making phone calls. And she thought, if we can use text messages for voting, why can't we use them for charitable donations? In 2005, Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, causing catastrophic damage and a humanitarian crisis. Marion watched the news coverage and felt helpless like millions of other Americans. But unlike most people, she had the skills and position to do something about it. She thought about how quickly text messages could reach people and how easy it would be to donate if you could just text a number instead of finding a website or making a phone call. Working with co-inventor Hossein Eslambolchi, she developed and patented the Text to Donate system. The technology allowed mobile phone users to send a text message to a specific number, and the donation amount would automatically be added to their monthly phone bill, with the money going directly to the charity. The patent was finalized in October 2005, just two months after Hurricane Katrina hit. The impact was immediate. The system raised $130,000 for Katrina relief, but its true power became clear in 2010 when a massive earthquake devastated Haiti. Using Marion's text-to-donate technology, Americans sent over $43 million in donations by simply texting. It was the largest mobile giving campaign in history at that time. 
Her invention revolutionized disaster relief and charitable giving forever. Today, every time you see a charity asking you to text HELP to 12345 to donate, you're using Marion Croak's invention. By the time she left AT&T in 2014, Marion had risen to Senior Vice President of Applications and Services Infrastructure. In that role, she managed over 2,000 engineers and computer scientists working on over 500 different programs affecting AT&T's entire network of enterprise and consumer services. She was one of the highest-ranking black women in the entire technology industry. In 2014, she joined Google as Vice President of Engineering. At Google, she led the reliability engineering team, making sure that massive systems like Google Ads and YouTube functioned properly for billions of users worldwide. She also worked on Project Loon, an ambitious initiative using high-altitude balloons to provide internet access to disaster areas and remote parts of the world where internet infrastructure doesn't exist. Today, she serves as Vice President of Engineering and leads the Research Center for Responsible AI and Human-Centered Technology at Google working on the ethical development of artificial intelligence. Her awards and recognition finally started coming later in her career. In 2013 and 2014, she won the Edison Patent Awards. In 2016, she was inducted into the Women in Technology International Hall of Fame. In 2022, at age 67, she was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame for her work on VoIP, becoming one of the first two black women ever to receive that honor. She was also inducted into the National Academy of Engineering and the American Academy of Arts and Sciences that same year. But here's what's frustrating. It took until 2022, almost 40 years after her groundbreaking work began, for her to receive the recognition she deserved. And even now, most people have never heard her name. If you ask someone who invented internet calling, they'll probably say they don't know or they'll name a tech company like Skype or Zoom. They won't say Dr. Marion Croak because her story has been systematically excluded from the popular history of the internet. This erasure is not accidental. The history of technology has always reflected the power structures of society. When women, especially black women, contribute to technological revolutions, their work is often written out, attributed to men, or dismissed as less important than it actually was. We saw this with the women computers at NASA like Katherine Johnson, Dorothy Vaughn, and Mary Jackson, whose calculations made space exploration possible but who were almost erased until the movie Hidden Figures brought their stories to light in 2016. The same pattern exists in computing history. Ada Lovelace pioneered algorithmic logic in the 1800s but was ignored for decades. The ENIAC programmers during World War II, who were mostly women, were called operators instead of engineers to diminish their contributions. And black women faced double discrimination, both for their race and their gender, making their invisibility even more complete. Dr. Gladys West, a black mathematician, did crucial work on satellite geodesy that laid the foundation for GPS, but few people know her name. Dr. Shirley Ann Jackson, a black theoretical physicist, made telecommunications breakthroughs that enabled call waiting, caller ID, and fiber optics, but she's rarely mentioned in tech history. Annie Easley, a black computer scientist at NASA, worked on code for rocket systems and early computational models, but most people have never heard of her. The pattern is clear. Black women have been fundamental to building the technologies that shape modern life but their contributions have been systematically minimized or erased entirely. This erasure matters because it perpetuates the false idea that technological genius is inherently white and male. It robs future generations of role models who look like them. Imagine how many young black girls might have pursued engineering careers earlier if Marion Croak's name had been taught alongside Bill Gates and Steve Jobs in schools. Imagine the cultural shift if her face appeared on posters celebrating innovation the way Thomas Edison's does. The story of the internet is usually told as a tale of white men working in government labs and Silicon Valley garages. We hear about Tim Berners-Lee inventing the World Wide Web, Vint Cerf and Bob Kahn developing TCP-RIP protocols, and tech entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos and Mark Zuckerberg building companies on top of internet infrastructure. These contributions are real and important, but they're not the whole story. The whole story includes Dr. Marion Croak convincing AT&T to adopt the protocols that made the modern internet possible, developing the technology that turned the internet into a communication platform instead of just a data network, 
and solving the engineering challenges that made voice and video transmission reliable and scalable. Every single day, billions of people use the technology she invented. Every Zoom meeting during the COVID-19 pandemic that allowed people to work from home, every FaceTime call that let families stay connected across distances, every Discord voice chat that brought gaming communities together, every WhatsApp video call that connected people across countries. All of it exists because Marion Croak figured out how to send voices across the internet. She didn't just contribute to the internet's development. She fundamentally transformed what the internet could do and what it could be. In her own words, Marion has said that inventors don't have to be superhuman geniuses. She's talked about how she wasn't the best student in every subject, how she sometimes struggled, how she just focused on the problems she wanted to solve and kept working until she solved them. That's the real story of innovation, not sudden flashes of genius from isolated individuals, but persistent work from diverse teams of people who see problems and refuse to give up until they find solutions. The fact that it took until 2022 for her to be inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame, the fact that most people still don't know her name, the fact that she's rarely mentioned in discussions of internet history. All of this is evidence of how deeply erasure has been ingrained in how we tell stories about technology. But history has a way of correcting itself, even if slowly. People are finally starting to recognize Dr. Marion Croak's contributions. Articles are being written, awards are being given, and her story is being told. But recognition isn't enough. We need to fundamentally rewrite how we teach the history of technology to reflect its true diversity. We need to put Dr. Marion Croak's name in textbooks alongside the other pioneers of the Internet age. We need to make sure that young people, especially young black girls, know that someone who looks like them created the technology that defines modern communication. We need to tell the truth about who built the world we live in, the Internet itself, this technology that has become humanity's central nervous system, connecting billions of people across the planet, enabling commerce and communication and creativity on a scale never before imagined, was shaped fundamentally by a black woman from New York City who just wanted to fix things and make them work better. Dr. Marion Croak saw the potential of the internet before most people understood what it was. She developed the technologies that turned that potential into reality. And she did it while facing discrimination, skepticism, and barriers that her white male colleagues never had to overcome. Her legacy is embedded in the infrastructure of modern life. It's in every voice call made over the internet, every video conference, every text donation to charity, every moment of digital connection between human beings. The world tried to forget her name, but her work speaks louder than any attempt at erasure. Every time you open Zoom for a meeting, remember Dr. Marion Croak. Every time you FaceTime a loved one, remember Dr. Marion Croak. Every time you text a donation to help people in crisis, remember Dr. Marion Croak. She didn't just contribute to the internet. She transformed it from a data network into a communication platform that brings humanity together. And that's a legacy that can't be erased, no matter how hard history tries.